Welcome. Today we're going to learn how to create a plant marker using Tinkercad. And so we'll learn how to create the basic shape for the plant marker. You'll learn how to put some text on there. You can choose not to put text on there and just write it on there with a magic marker, but we'll learn how anyway. And as an added bonus, we'll learn how to create a planter that you could use with the plant marker. And so this will be a little bowl that you could start seeds in or add a small plant that you already have. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing you need to do is open up a web browser. And with your web browser open, you want to go to the address bar at the very top. Click up there and type in tinkercad.com. So T-I-N-K-E-R-C-A-D.com. Click enter and that will take you to Tinkercad's homepage. From here, you'll have the option to log in if you already have a Tinkercad account, sign up if you need to create one, or if you scroll down just a bit, you can even click the link down here that says join class if you're using this as part of a class and enter the code that your teacher will give you. So I'm gonna go ahead and get logged in. And once you are logged in, you will see your design gallery if you've created something in Tinkercad before. If not, this will be blank, but you will have the button here that says Create. Choose the option to create and then select 3D Design. Now this will open up a brand new work plane where you'll be able to create your project. But before we get started, look up in the top left corner and you'll see a name that Tinkercad has assigned your project. Now this name will be something crazy, so you wanna change that and make sure it's something you can recognize. So just click on that title and type in something that makes sense. So I'll call mine Betsy's Plant Marker. And click enter and that will be your title. So now I'm ready to get started with my actual project. So I'm gonna come over here in the right side where I see all of these shapes and I'm going to select this red box. Looks like a cube. I'm going to click it one time and then click on the work plane. Now, if I click on one of these white squares that is in the corner, I can see right now the box is 20 millimeters by 20 millimeters. Notice it does have two decimal places beside that. Don't worry about those. Now I'm going to click on the bottom 20 here that shows me the width and I'm going to type in 60 to make it wider. Next up, I'm going to start making the spike that will be the bottom of the plant marker. I'm going to select another box from the work plane and this time I'm going to place it on that side that is facing me. And I'm just going, I can see that circle right there that shows me that it is on that side. And then I'm just going to click to place that on there. Notice that makes this green square appear. That just shows me that it is on that surface and not on the bottom. Now I'm going to click anywhere to make the green square go away. So just anywhere on the background there and that green square will go away. Now I'm going to select this shape here that I have in the front. And on the keyboard, I'm going to find the D button and I'm going to click D for drop and that will drop it onto the blue work plane. So depending on where you placed it originally, you may notice a big change or you may not notice much of a change at all, but that does make sure it will line up with the bottom edge of that square. Now I'm ready to adjust the sizing here for the spike. So I'm going to click on one of these corner squares. So again, I see the dimensions. I'm going to click on this one on the side and change that to 40. So four zero and enter. Now I'm going to click on the one at the bottom that shows me the width and I'm going to type eight and enter. Now I'm ready to put the spike on the end so I can stab it in the ground well. So I'm going to select the green roof shape. And again, I'm going to position it so that it's on that side 
that is closest to me. I'll see a little circle there. Click and that will be placed there. Now I'm going to click anywhere to make the green square go away. Select the green roof shape again and click D on the keyboard to drop that onto the blue work plane. Now I need to adjust the dimensions on the spike. I'm going to rotate so that I see it a little more from the top. In order to rotate, you can use the die up here in the corner, or you can hold down the right mouse button as you move it. So I'm going to click on the corner square around that roof shape, and I'm going to change this bottom number, the 20, and make it 8. Enter. Now I need to get these two shapes lined up. So to do that, I'm going to make sure I have this roof selected. I'm going to hold down the shift key on the keyboard and click on the long rectangle here. Now I can see if I have done that correctly, it should show me here that I have two shapes selected. Now I'm going to hit the align tool which looks like a rectangle on top of a square against a line. So when I click that, I'm going to have all of these little circles appear around. And I'm going to click on the center circle at the bottom to line those shapes up. Now I still have them all, both selected, so I'm going to also click on the group button, which looks like a square and a circle joined together in order to make those one shape. Now I need to get my spike centered with my label. So I'm going to, once again, make sure I have the spike selected, hold down the shift key and select the label part. That allows me to select two things at one time. I know I've done it correctly if it shows me here that I have two shapes selected. Now I'm going to use that align tool again. And now I'm going to click on the center circle at the bottom to put that spike in the center. Now I want to group those together. So I'm going to select the group option again. And now I have the plant marker except if I view it from the side, you'll see it's too fat, so I need to make it skinny. So I'm going to find this square, the white square that's in the center, click on it, and instead of making it 20 millimeters high, I'm going to click on that 20 and change that to one millimeter high. So now you can see it is a good thickness for a plant marker. Now that is the basic shape of the plant marker. If you want to write your text on there, you can skip ahead to the exporting, slicing and printing part. If you want to actually have the text printed on there, that's what we'll do next. So you wanna come back over to the shapes options and here you'll see text, it's red. I'm gonna click that text and then I'm going to add it on top of my plant marker. So I should see that little circle on top of the plant marker. Now in the little window over here on the side, I wanna change what the text says. So decide what kind of plant you want to use and type that into that box there. Now it's a good idea to view your shape from the top as you get ready to line the text up. So if you come to where the dice is over here and click on top, it'll give you a good top view of your uh, text. And now I'm going to use the corner squares. This time, instead of typing anything in, I'm just gonna click on the corner square, hold down the mouse button and drag to make it smaller or larger if you need to, whatever size you need to make it fit onto your plant marker. Now, once you have the size that you need, I'm going to line it up. So I'm going to select both the text, hold down the shift key, select the marker. 
Now again, I have both shapes selected. Now I'm going to use the Align tool and the Center button to line those up. Now finally, I also want to make sure this text is not sticking way off like it is right now. So I'm going to select the text, click on the center white square, and change that and make it one millimeter thick. That way it just barely sticks up off of the plant marker. Now, if you wish, you can change the colors. The color it's going to print is going to depend on what type of filament you stick in the printer, but it can be helpful to see what the colors would look like by playing with them here in Tinkercad. So if I want to change the color of the text, I can change that. And if I want to change the color of the marker, I can change that to make whatever color you want for the marker and the text. So again, you can use one color for the background, one color for the text. Once you are satisfied with your plant marker, we're ready to export, slice, and print. So the first thing I want to do, make sure nothing is selected, and then I'm going to come over here and click on the export button. This is going to make a little window pop up. Make sure everything in the design is selected and then choose the option here for .stl. That's the type of file we want to save it for, save it as. Now that will download. And now I'm ready to go to my slicing program to get this ready to print. Now I am using Prusa Slicer. You may use a different slicing program. The process will be the same even if the buttons are a little bit different. So I first want to get my project on the plate here. So I'm going to use the add or import button. That looks like a cube with a plus symbol on it. Click on that. And now I'm going to choose the project that I just saved. If you can't find it, it should be in your downloads folder and it should be called whatever you named it in Tinkercad. And then I'm going to click on open. Now this will add my project to the printer plate. Next, I want to check and make sure I have the correct printer selected. For print settings, this is how high it's going to print each layer. You want to use 0.2. The type of filament, you're probably using PLA, but you could use a different one. So make sure you have the correct settings there for the type of filament. You do not need supports on this project and an infill of 20% will be fine. Now I'm going to come down here and click on Slice Now. Now I do want to change the color after it finishes the background before it starts the text. That way I can make the text a different color than the background. To do that, I'm going to use the slider here. And the slider allows me to back down each layer and so I'm going to go to the very first layer where I can see all of the text. It should be at 1.2 if you have all the same settings that I do. Then I'm going to click on the plus button. That's going to insert a stop so that after the printer is done with what my printer is currently showing here in black, once that's finished, it will stop, it'll beep, and I can change the color to be whatever I want for the word. Now, don't worry about the colors shown here in your slicing program. The color it prints will depend on what filament you stick in the printer, obviously. Okay, and so now I have the plant marker sliced. I'm going to need to click Slice Now again since I added that stop. Now I want to go get my SD card and insert that into my computer. And then I'm going to click on this icon here in the bottom corner to save the file now to the SD card. So click, make sure you recognize the title, then click save. And now you can take that SD card out of the printer. We'll eject and then X. Take the SD card out of the computer, take it to your printer and start printing your plant marker. Now, you may also want a planter where you can use your plant marker. So 
we will create that now. So first thing I'm going to do is select my plant marker. So notice I selected both the text and the background by clicking somewhere in the background and dragging this imaginary red box around both shapes. Now I have them both selected and I can just click and drag them somewhere to the back there. That will give me more space here to create my planter. So to start with, I'm going to use a cone shape. So over here on the shapes, I'm going to choose the purple cone and add that to the work plane. Now this shows me the measurements of the cone in this little window here. I'm going to change those to get the size and shape of cone that I want to use. So I'm going to change the top radius, the size it is on the top, to 35. I'm going to change the base radius, the size it is on the bottom, to 30. And I'm going to change the height, how tall it is, to 60. And then just to make it as round as I can, I'm going to take the slider beside sides and drag it all the way to the right so that I'm at 64. Now I need a hole in the middle of this so that I will be able to put my dirt and my plant. So I'm going to make sure I have the cone selected and then click on the button here that says duplicate. It looks like three squares on top of one another. Once you click it, it's going to appear like nothing happens because the second cone is right on top of the first one. So you can't see anything. So don't just keep clicking it, click it one time. Okay, and it's there even though it doesn't appear different. So I have that second one automatically selected. You don't have to do anything, just make sure it's still there. And then I'm going to change it to a hole by clicking on this striped circle right here. So now you can see I have my solid cone that's purple, the whole one that is gray striped, and they're right on top of one another, which makes them both hard to see. Now I need the hole to be a little bit smaller than the cone. So I'm going to come back to this window over here, make sure I have the whole one selected. It'll have a blue circle around it if it's selected. And I'm going to change the top radius and the base radius. So I'm going to change the top radius by clicking on that 35. I'm going to change it to 33. And the base radius I'm going to change to 28. So now I've made that cone a little bit smaller. Now I need to raise it up because right now if I show you from the bottom, it would go all the way through all the dirt and plant would fall out. It would be very sad. So I need to raise that up. So I'm going to make sure I select the hole. And then I'm going to look for this little shape. It looks like a triangle or a, uh, sometimes it looks like a cone, depending on what angle you view it from. But I want to select that shape and I'm going to just click and drag up two millimeters. So it should stick out of the purple part a little bit. Now I need to group those two shapes together so that the hole actually gets cut out of the middle. So I'm going to click over here in space, drag that red rectangle so that at least part of each of those shapes is included. I can check if I've done it correctly, if I have shapes selected too. And then I can click on the group button to join them together. So now you see I have this nice little cup shape. So the final thing I need to do is put just a little hole in the middle so that the water can drain out and my plant won't get all soggy. So to do that, I'm going to use this gray striped cylinder over here. The gray stripes mean that something is a hole. So I'm going to click on that and then I just want to click anywhere here on the work plane. Make sure you don't put it on your object anywhere, but make sure it's on this blue background. Now I want to change the size. So I'm going to click on one of these corner squares and I'm going to change the size by clicking here, change that to a seven. Click on this one down here, change that to a seven so that it's a nice round circle again. 
Now I need to center these two shapes. So I have this one selected. Now I'm going to hold down the shift key and select the other. So I have both of these shapes selected, shape selected two. Click on the align tool. And then I want to center this direction and center this direction. So if I view it from the top, you can see that that circle is now in the middle. To actually cut it out now, I'm going to click on the group button. So again, that square and circle join together. And now I have a hole in the middle of my planter. So that is the basic shape for the planter. If you'd like some additional challenges, click really quickly to the end of the video and see what those additional challenges might be. And then come back and learn how to export, slice, and print your design. If you don't want any additional challenges and you're ready to go, let's go ahead and get started with exporting, slicing, and getting this thing ready to print. So I have this shape selected. Make sure it is selected and that the plant marker is not selected. Now I'm going to click on the export button. This time I want to make sure it says include the selected shape. And again, click on .stl to save that as an STL file. Now I'm going to go back to my slicing software and I still have my plant marker on there. So I'm going to go up to the very top, click file, new project. Now I'm ready to add the planter. So I'm going to click on the add or import button. Choose that file that I just saved. Notice if you didn't change your title, like I didn't, it will be called plant marker with some number at the end. Click on open. Now we can see this on the printer plate. Check your settings. Make sure you have the correct printer selected. Uh, for the print settings, the layer height, you can choose something between 0.2 and 0.3. And I will be printing with PLA filament. I'll use an infill of 20%. You do not need supports. Now I can click on Slice Now. Now it's a good idea to always scroll down to the very bottom and see what that first layer is going to look like. Make sure it didn't get rotated weird uh, and nothing's missing here. As long as yours kind of look like mine does with a little donut shape, then you're good to go. We'll raise that back up to the top. Now I want to grab the SD card from the printer, stick that into my computer. I'll have a little icon pop up down here. I'll click on that to save the G code file to that SD card. Click on, you can change the name if you want. And then click on the save button. Now you can eject that, take that SD card out, take it to your printer and get started printing. So now that you're finished, you'll have a planter and your plant marker. So you can put your starter seeds in there and go ahead and get your plants growing. And if you'd like to take this project a little bit further and challenge yourself with some other options, here's some ideas for you. So one option could be to decorate the outside of the planter. So if you want to add a word, some text, maybe you want to add a rim to the top, or maybe you want to put some polka dots on here. See if you can figure out how to add things to the outside of the planter. Be careful that whatever you add doesn't go through to the inside or you won't be able to put your dirt and plants in. Another idea is to add a saucer for the bottom because you put the hole in the bottom to allow the water to drain. Make sure that there's a place for that to go. So what kind of saucer could you create to catch the water so that it doesn't run all over the counter or wherever you put your planter? And finally, an option for you if you're looking for more than just one planter, can you create a design that incorporates multiple planters? So you could have multiple ones with a box to hold them or whatever you can imagine. So those are some ideas if you want to take this project a little bit further.